in the recent past, I have found myself reminding uh, the people around me that the world is a cruel place from experience. I don't know how many will agree with me that the world is a cruel place, especially in the present time. And I am at a loss whether to say that the world is a cruel place or it is us who are cruel people. Because it seems to be um, like, you know, a jungle where it is survival for the fittest. And therefore, if you cannot cope, then you fall off the way. You either eat or you are eaten. And so, in order to survive, people come up with various coping mechanisms. And in fact, whether it is about friendships, it is about um, 
the question is what is it that is in store for me what do i get from you know keeping my friendship with you and therefore um often times we uh rush to use the term that has become so common that you know you cut off those who are not beneficial to you i don't know how many have fallen victims of being cut off um because you are benefit ceased to obtain um with your circle of friends and so every time and again it is one disappointment after another and it is one heartbreak after another and um the young people are struggling to find the meaning of life and indeed the old people are like because even the elderly are stressed am i right or right and that is the world that we find ourselves in and so we have pain of loss of loved ones and we have pain of loss of jobs and the struggles that we go of broken families and uh, and and uh, you know diseases and all manner of sufferings and then we wonder what is really the meaning of life is this that is it all that is supposed to, life was supposed to be is it all that life was meant to be as we are experiencing it in the present time and i want to invite you to um think about job as he has faced all the manner of sufferings and then he says in the book of job chapter 19 verse 25 says for i know that my redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the later day upon the earth and though after my skin my worms destroy this body yet in my flesh i shall see god so the one thing that keeps job hopeful and with a reason to live is that even though his skin and flesh be destroyed he knows that one day in his flesh he shall see god and i want to say with job today that i know that after all this is said and done i want to see god and that is what keeps me moving from day to day because i shall see my king and i shall forever reign with him in the new heaven and in the new earth and so allow me to invite you to this afternoon of worship as we look into the christian walk as we look into self examination as we are invited to experience the grace and salvation of god and ultimately seek to have our minds drawn to the great and eternal promise of the second return of jesus christ and the promise of dwelling in heaven eternally with my lord welcome and have a wonderful experience let us rise up as we say a prayer dear god it is us again before you just to worship you and to seek refuge at your feet may you receive our praises may you inhabit our praises and may you indwell us lift our hearts up to you that everyone who is in the audience chamber of this worship will leave this place blessed and prepared for your second coming in Jesus name i pray
into the marvelous character of God. It energizes their conversations, lightens their mood, and fills their mind with a wonder of realities well beyond their comprehension. It fuels their walk and talk with their best friend. For others, much like our poor parents, curiosity is a deadly trap. Toiling through long dreary days, man who has dwelt in the presence of God and in the comfort of Eden, oblivious to the grueling realities of sin and its baggage, now faces constant threat of creatures over whom he had dominion, famine where there was once plenty to eat, and betrayal where there was no reason to distrust a neighbor. All this driven by the desire to know good rather than to know God. Brethren, the realities of sin is ugly and unfair. Daily we are persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. Yet we are called to strive, dying to self with every breath that in Jesus' death and resurrection, he may live his life within us. And even when it gets too hard for us to see beyond our present suffering, we are reminded yet again that we haven't had any temptation that is uncommon to mankind. You are not alone. Amen. The children, the, the Christian walk is one filled with ups and downs, victories and defeats, seasons of great joy and others of abject sadness. Our imperfections and quick, the quick descent of the world into chaos forces us to combat an energy both from without and within. The, the temptation to give up because of the constant strife grows greater every day but you are not alone you may have fallen so many times you wonder whether the journey is worth the effort you find it difficult to connect with a god that sometimes feels like a concept rather than a real being you wish 
your relationship with God was not as stale. And you wonder whether it was imagined or dreamt up. Brethren, I am here to tell you, you are not alone. Just hold on. God is here for every step of the way. He has never left you. He will never leave you. And he's too stubborn to leave you. Amen. I pray that every single one of you may experience a portion of the wonderful relationship we shall soon share with our Father in heaven here on earth.
Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. In Psalm 139, from verse 23 to 24, David cried out to God, saying, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. These are beautiful words. But my brothers and sisters, no one stumbles through the pearly gates of heaven through happenstance. It is not by chance or by betting that we get ourselves into heaven. The Christian walk is a demanding and conscious journey where one is deeply aware of the deficiencies and clings to Jesus, who is the only hope of our redemption. In Matthew chapter 7, and if you read with me, verse 13 to 14, it says, Wide is the gate that leads to destruction, but narrow is the road. Now listen, there is a gate and a, and, and, and a road. So wide is the gate that leads to destruction, but narrow is the road that leads to life. Only few find it. Are you going to be among the few that will find it? Ask yourself. If you want to have a stronger relationship with Christ, the immediate guarantee that is available to us is only incredible difficulty. It is not going to be easy. The narrow path is not inaccessible, though. It is just closed off for the half-hearted people. The disingenuous soul that thinks that they can live, speak and think however they want, and still make it to see God someday. Brethren, if that is you, I implore you that you seize such line of thought immediately. Self-examination is hard. It is hard to have a teachable spirit. Think about this. Is it easy for you to hear someone mention your weakness in public and not activate your self-defense and shoot back at them? It is hard not to activate your defenses when we hear the ugly truths about yourself being talked about. It's hard to allow the spirit to cut deep through the power of the word of God. My dear friends, I hope you never deprive yourselves of a necessity of growth and an experience with God just because it is hard. Don't make God wait to enter your heart too long don't make the spirit grieve at your stubborn, hard-hearted course. Don't make void the sacrifice of Christ just because you neglected the hour of prayer and deep reflection. As the next batch of songs come into play, I invite you and I implore you to take a moment and consider your ways, even as I consider mine. I ask that you think deeply about whether your conduct befits that of a believer of Christ. Remember the apostolic church? Remember Peter, John, and Saul? Yes. Does your conduct fit theirs? Yes, they are not the, the scheme upon which our life must be grounded. But think about Jesus Christ, our Savior. I pray that you allow God to search your heart deeply and to convict you of whatever wrong that you have justified so long and allow him to break the power of sinful desires in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. We will turn to hymn number 432, Shall We Gather at the River, 432, and we'll all sing.
Shall we gather at the river Where bright angels feet have trod With its crystal tide forever Flowing by the throne of God Yes, we'll gather, yes, yes we'll, we'll gather at the river The beautiful, the beautiful river Saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray, we will walk and worship ever all the happy golden days. We'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that lost by the throne of God. And we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Raise our spirit to deliver and provide our robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather, yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that lost by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather, yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river, gather with the saints of the river, that lost by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather, yes.
those hands so often reached out in blessing, nailed to the wooden bars, those feet so tireless on ministries of love, spiked to the tree, that royal head pierced by the crown of thorns, those quivering lips shaped to the cry of woe, and all that he endured, the blood drops that flowed from his head, his hands, his feet, the agony that tracked his frame, and the unutterable anguish that filled his soul at the hiding of his father's face, speaks to each child of humanity, declaring, It is for thee that the Son of God consents to bear this burden of guilt. For thee he spoils the domain of death and opens the gates of paradise. He who stilled the angry waves and walked the foam-capped billows, who made devils tremble and diseases flee, who opened blind eyes and called forth the dead to life, offers himself upon the cross as a sacrifice, and this from love to thee. He, the sin-bearer, endures the wrath of divine justice, and for thy sake becomes sin itself. The heart of God yearns over his earthly children with a love stronger than death. In giving up his son, he has poured out to us all of heaven in one gift. This is the story of redemption, the story of grace, the story of the cross, the story of God's unfathomable love. Yes, God thinks you're worth his life. This, remember the next time the enemy tells you otherwise.
the Bible opens and closes with two instances of people trying in vain to hide from God. In Eden, after Adam and Eve had sinned by eating from the forbidden tree, the souls were starred with guilt when they took notice of the consequences of their actions. Now, fast forward to the end of the time when God will pour out his judgment to this sinful world. We read from Revelation chapter 6 verse 15 to 16 that the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the mighty men, the commanders, every slave and every free man hid themselves in caves and the rocks of the mountains and said to the rocks and the mountains, fall on us that our face may not be seen by him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. When you compare this experience with the great hope that we have as believers who are in fellowship with Jesus, we look forward to seeing him and being with him and being ushered into his presence when he comes again. As you sit with yourself, wrestling with your conscience and examining your heart, to see which group you shall identify on that fateful day. I hope you choose life. To look forward with joyous anticipation to that day when Jesus will return to earth, not as a man of sorrows, but as a king of kings and as a lord of lords. On that day, the dead in Christ shall rise fast. Then his believers who are alive it changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and together with his redeemed company, now immortal, will travel through time and space in the paradise of God to heaven itself, and we shall behold him. The sky shall unfold, preparing his entrance. The stars shall applaud him with thunders of praise. And 
Let us turn to 632, my heart can sing when I pause to remember. We are just but pilgrims in this world. Our home awaits us in heaven.
that caused the earth to tremble, tremble, tremble. trumpet and loud let it ring hymn number 213 two, one, three. Two, one, three, 213 Jesus is coming again trumpet and loud let it ring Jesus is coming again cheer up the pilgrims be joyful and sing Jesus is coming again coming again coming again Jesus is coming again Jesus is coming again, coming in glory, the love that was slain. Jesus is coming again, he's coming, coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. He is of a tell the most wandering throng. Jesus is coming again. Tempest and wild wind, the earth and prolong. Jesus is coming again. He's coming, coming again. Coming again. Jesus is coming again. Nations are angry, but they sweet and all. Jesus is coming again. Knowledge increases, men run to and fro. Jesus is coming again. He's coming, coming again. Coming again. Jesus is coming again. He's coming, coming again.
And then methought my dream was changed, the streets no longer wrong. Hush to all the glad was on us, the little children song. The sun was dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chill as the shadow.
sorrows will be over when we get home. God is good all the time. All the time. How many have been blessed? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think this has been a wonderful session. I think you've been treated to a wonderful music, musical concert this afternoon and I want to appreciate the conveners, the planners for the excellent work they've done, the excellent voices we've heard from this young, young men and young girls. How many have been blessed? I think we can't wait for the next one. Yeah, you see, when you read Isaiah 33, 17, it says that uh, we shall see the king in his beauty. And that is the desire of someone who is sick, even as we sing here. That is the desire of the orphan somewhere in the forgotten corner of the world. That is the desire of someone who has just lost a loved one in an accident. That one day, when all sorrows will be over when you get home. But then I want us to do one more song. That is song number 214. I want you to conduct, to conduct this one. But I also want to invite Brother Godwin and Sister Donna. You here? Yes, come. I want us to do this song together. The hope that burns within us. The hope that burns within us. And then I'm going to pray. Yeah. 
encourage someone, if you are sick, don't be discouraged. Christ will come for you. If you are going through relationship turmoils, don't be discouraged. Soon everything will be over. Allow me to pray, even as I request the online church. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to appreciate those who have been in church physically. A few functions actually fill up this church in the afternoon like this. So that means that we are challenged to continue planning for more musical concerts in the afternoon. Uh, shall we pray even as we conclude? Loving Master, it is the hope and the desire of everyone that, Lord, soon everything shall be over. That the pain that you go through in this world will soon be over. The separations, the painful divorce experiences will soon be over. That those who have been sickling, wondering whether all this will one day be over, the hope you have been given in Isaiah 33, 17, that one day every eye shall be able to behold the king in his beauty. Father, it is my prayer that to bless each and every one of us. May we continue to inspire these wonderful voices. If there's one who is given up, Father, pray that to inspire their hope. If there's a family going through financial difficulties, Father, may you inspire their hope. If there's a young girl who has been left orphan, raped in forgotten corners of the world, crying and saying, when will these tears be over? Father, the hope is given that soon, soon, all the tribulations of the world will soon be over. Bless everyone who has been tuning in, those who have listened, those who have followed, those who have typed amen in acclamation, in joy, awaiting the soon coming of Christ. Father, may you continue to inspire each and every one of us. Bless us as a church, New Life SD Church. Bless the friends of this church. Bless those who are tuning in from various corners of the world. May you inspire their hope that, Lord, soon everything will be over because one day we are going to see the king in his beauty. Bless everyone who has participated, the pianist, the wonderful voices from these young men and women, the wonderful voices from those who have participated, the wonderful voices from the con con conductors and those who have been choristering. Father, unite us that, Lord, together we can continue to sing, saying, soon we shall see the king in his beauty. Now bless each and every one of us for a plead in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Tell your neighbor God loves you.